Welcome to Winning Wednesday, everybody. We're going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. If you have a need for this subject, which you know you do. Whoa. Hi, everyone. Is it too early for all of this? I'm in the holiday season already, but let me know if I'm too early. Like, am I doing this too early? Because I feel like it's time. It's time. Hi, everybody. My name is Regina MSN RN, and this is Winning Wednesday, where I help you pass your NCLEX exam by studying the content, not just going over questions. We do have questions, but content is key. So we are going over rheumatoid arthritis. Hi, good evening, everyone. <laughs> All right, rheumatoid arthritis. But before I get into it, this is happening. This is the season and this is why I'm so excited is because we do have Black Friday coming. It is huge. It is our biggest event that we do every year um, around the Thanksgiving time. And we're starting it early with Quick Facts. So uh, if I pull out, if I pull out Santa's bag, guess what is going to come out first? And I, I'm, I'm thinking this bag will be my announcement bag. So I will be letting you guys know what we have every season. So the first thing that we have is quick facts. This is going to be the holiday uh, gift for nursing students starting on Friday. So what we're calling it, you've been emailing me about this 10 on the 10th. Okay. So November 10th, 2010, every quick facts book will be just $10. So if you need this book, you don't have it, or if you want to give it to somebody else, your favorite nursing student, whatever, whatever. I know I have instructors watching people who are past NCLEX, but you love to give back. Okay. This will be $10 for you to do. And this is a great place for you to start. If you don't have V2, because a couple weeks from then, then you'll be able to get the rest of the content in the V2 for the Black Friday then. So this is how we're starting it off. I told you guys the holiday season was coming. So please like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Now, how do you get access to the 10 for 10? It is very simple. What you need to do is go to my website and you're going to RSVP for Black Friday. Okay. RSVP for Black Friday. So if you go to remarnurse.com, this little informational tool will come up and it'll say, give me your name, give me your email. Phone number is for texting, so I can just text you, hey, Black Friday has started. Hey, Quick Facts book is on sale for $10. That is why I'm asking you for this information, nothing else. Like, you sign up because you want to know what we're doing for Black Friday. Also, 10 for 10, okay? Just know that, 10 on the 10th. And then when you sign up on no, before November 10th, ideally, you would sign up before this Friday. You will also know what we're coming down the pipeline with my Black Friday class, when Black Friday will officially start, and what other things I will be pulling out of this bag. This is a mystery bag for Remar nurses for this year. So it's the season of giving. I'm really anticipating more testimonials, more of you who are passing, and it all begins on this Friday. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. But we got rheumatoid arthritis coming up for you guys. Let me take off my jingles. All right, I will see my gift bag later, okay? But we are going to come in and say, I love this, Mary. Hi, I just wanna come and say hi to all of you and give the good news that I am officially a Remar nurse. You know, I love that. I was the one who cannot show up to your live classes due to my baby always being fussy, but it's good to know that you passed. So congratulations. Who else? Who else needs to come on here and let me know that they passed their NCLEX? As I get into this topic, we are doing rheumatoid arthritis. We are doing rheumatoid arthritis. So let's start by this. Let's start by this. I would love for somebody to put in the comments for rheumatoid arthritis, which system is affected? If we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis, which system is affected? Thank you guys. You guys are so complimentary to me tonight. Love it. So very good. Let me get my notes that I wrote. This subject is also by way of quick facts for NCLEX as well. I was looking at it uh, as well. It is on page, somebody run me the page for rheumatoid arthritis, 78. And your quick facts for NCLEX. Good job. I was looking for this answer. It is the musculoskeletal system. So when you look at the term rheumatoid, rue 
actually does mean musculoskeletal. So we know that this is a system that is going to be affected. Arthritis, we know that itis is inflammation and arthro means joints. So we have a musculoskeletal problem where we have inflammation of the joints. And that's how we can always remember this. Now, I love this question because this is a defining characteristic of rheumatoid arthritis, which you do want to know the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. So in your mind, be thinking of that. What is the difference if my patient has osteoarthritis or if they have rheumatoid arthritis? Know those two. We're going to go over those but as well. But it is a symmetrical disease. Yes, it is a symmetrical disease. Loving the comments over 500 nurses today. So this is a, a great starting place for the foundation of understanding this topic. So let's go a little bit deeper into it, shall we? Rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, Lori, it is a musculoskeletal issue. The disease is the two S's. It is symmetric and it is systemic, meaning that it's going to affect both sides the same. So you have here hands, right? Rheumatoid arthritis does affect the hands and the wrist. It also is going to affect the rest of the body too. Like, you know, um, and so you're going to have inflammation that is surrounding the joints and the tissues. So if a patient has inflammation of the joints and the tissues, what are they going to feel? How are they going to feel? Okay. This uncontrolled inflammation can lead to cardiovascular issues, osteoporosis, and even some cancers of the limbic, lymphatic system. So rheumatoid arthritis is a very serious condition. Do you know somebody with RA? Do you know somebody with RA? It is very important to know that most people, by the time they receive a diagnosis that they have rheumatoid arthritis, they've actually already had it for years. They've had it for a very long time, but the, si the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, when we look at them, you will be able to determine how you can have rheumatoid arthritis for years and not know that you have it. So let's talk about that. Look at the early symptoms that are, look, what do we call them? Nonspecific. So your, your patient may say, uh, I have fatigue, I have malaise, loss of appetite, I'm losing weight. They may have, you know, frequent infections and they're going to the hospital, they're going to their primary care provider and they're saying, oh, you know, maybe, maybe you're anemic, right? Maybe you have uh, the seasonal flu, maybe, you know, like maybe you just need some iron. And actually what's happening is this rheumatoid arthritis. So the patient may be totally unaware that they're on the progression to have that. The later signs and symptoms, I see this comment. Then the patient will report, now they have joint stiffness. Now they are having neuropathy. Okay? They're having pain. And then their hands begin to, their hands begin to, form the rheumatoid nodules, okay? Now, I want you, as I'm saying this, can you make the correlation for the, the signs, the signs? Can you think, okay, if my patient is having bilateral joint stiffness, why is that occurring? If my patient is having neuropathy, why would a patient with rheumatoid arthritis have a neuropathy? Why is that? What is the pain? What is the cause of the pain? So as we're studying the content, I want you to be making these connections so that the content is knitted in your mind. Rheumatoid nodules, what are those about? Shout out to Nurse Amy. Here's some motivation. Thanks, Remar family. I, I passed my NCLEX PN and I ran out of time. Oh, this is a good one. Because when you run out of time, you really don't know, was I doing good or was I not doing good? 
I ran out of time at 120 questions. I was nervous after the test only to get a congratulations message in my email from the board. This is beautiful. Quick facts in V2 is a magic. Amazing. I like these. I like testimonials where um, something unexpected happens. You ran out of time. You weren't expecting that to happen. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, so the complications of the rheumatoid arthritis is this Sjogren's syndrome. So Sjogren's syndrome is where, if you never heard of this before, just really quickly, Sjogren's syndrome is when a patient has extreme drying of their eyes and of their mouth. So it seems like, um, all, like, yeah, it just seems like they have sand in their eyes. You know, if you're on the beach and the wind blows and you get sand in your eyes and you're constantly like trying to get it out, that's what the patient feels like. And so they're not able to, they're not able to really live a good quality of life because their vision is constantly blurry. Their eyes are really dry all the time. The same thing with their, with their mouth. The mouth gets really dry with Sjogren's syndrome to the point where, um, they have throat soreness because their mouth is so dry. They may have to drink water with every bite of a meal. Because, you know, naturally when you're eating, more saliva is produced. But with this condition, the patient, they, they don't even want to eat because they, they don't have the saliva to even help them digest the food. So what you can see with rheumatoid arthritis that's not well managed. This is why it's so important for us to be able to understand these initial presenting symptoms and how we are going to diagnose this patient. Okay, what else? So we have um, carpal tunnel syndrome because we know rheumatoid arthritis does affect the wrist. Osteoporosis, definitely, as the in um, as the antibodies attack the, uh, the, the, the immune system, the joints, less bone marrow is going to be produced, less red blood cells are going to be produced, and that's going to lead to anemia and bony ankylosis is where the patient will begin to have their um, fusion happen between, fusion happen with that between the, the, the tendons and the bones, and never a good thing for our patient. Okay, how do we differentiate arthritis? And I have here gout, osteoarthritis, and juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. We need to know how they are going to present differently. So with gouty arthritis, gouty arthritis is self-limiting. When I say anything is self-limiting, it means that it will only progress to a certain point and then it won't go any further. No matter whether the treatment is implemented or not, it's only going to go so far. So gouty arthritis is self-limiting and it affects only one or two joints. It won't spread all over the body. Okay. It won't spread all over the body. So sometimes people have it in their big toe, but they won't have it in their big toe, their wrists, their knees. Does that make sense? Also, um, it's unilateral. So whereas rheumatoid arthritis is bilateral, gout is going to be unilateral. And you will see evidence of gout in a patient in the synovial fluids. You're going to see urates in that syn synovial fluid. Osteoarthritis. What is the difference here? Osteoarthritis does not produce an inflammatory response. Now, this is very important because when, a, when the body has chronic inflammation, when there is constantly immune system firing, attack, 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 that is going to predispose the patient to more serious complications than just the um, joint stiffness, right? because they're going to have immune response that's going to affect their eyes, their nervous system, it's going to affect their um, bone marrow production, all those things. But with osteoarthritis, because you don't have any immune response, you're just going to primarily have joint stiffness, right? Or you're just going to have the, the hard swelling um, and it is going to not be an issue for you in terms of involving the glands or the other tissues. 
And so usually with osteoarthritis, there's less, uh, less to no stiffness. Usually evening stiffness is noted after a long day. Whereas we know rheumatoid arthritis, when does that stiffness happen? It happens in the morning. It happens in the morning. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. This is an arthritis that is seen and it is called idiopathic because we don't really know what's causing it. It can happen as early as six weeks, but it normally does not happen before the age of six months. So usually between ages one and three and eight and 12, patients will have juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. The difference of arthritis when it presents in children is they will have, um, they'll have a fever. They will have the joint stiffness though, too. We don't typically see fevers in adult patients with arthritis, but children, you do see a fever accompanying it. So that's really interesting. Also, sometimes kids can have a, a rash as well. So it is rheumatoid arthritis if it meets the following criteria. It was rheumatoid arthritis, but it, if it meets the following criteria. Wait a minute. I see a testimonial, but I'm trying I'm trying to teach. Now you guys have con conversations going on. What does it say? Nurse Patricia must have passed. I tried other reviews, but my attention span was too short to sit for hours and hours and never getting to the point of what I was supposed to learn. But I love how you got straight to the point. Okay. Hi, I see it here. Um, thank you again. I'm a Remar nurse. I can and did become a Remar nurse by the grace of God. Congratulations. I'm, I almost missed this. But this is what it's all about. Winning Wednesday. If you are next to pass the NCLEX, if you are next to pass the NCLEX, just let me know in the comments. Okay. I have some RNs representing. I'm a Remar nurse, RN. 87 questions. I love that. Okay. We're getting some information. Nurse Paris. Hi, Regina. I wrote my NCLEX RN on October 26th. Anybody testing this month? I got my unofficial results that I passed. I'm officially a Remar RN to God be the glory. Thank you, Mark and Regina, for praying with me. I hope you guys don't mind when I read these testimonials because they really are a part of um, the process for most people. Some of you guys just you you just need to see that it's possible. Nurse Amy gives advice. She says, "Please, guys, read Quick Facts and V2 very well. I got a lot of case studies." Standalone, few SATA. My last question was a case study. Ooh, I thank God and Regina and Mark. QF and V2 is the real deal. Don't give up. Great. I am I am so looking forward to you guys doing very well in those case studies. If you're in the V2 and you see them in the question bank, don't skip them. Do them each and every time. So rheumatoid arthritis, morning stiffness. Yes, arthritis in three or more joint areas. Check. Because remember, what did I say about rheumatoid arthritis is systemic. So that means if there is a joint that can be affected, then it will be affected with rheumatoid arthritis. And look what it involves. Primarily, you're going to see it start in the hands and in the wrists. And so that's different because osteoarthritis usually is up here, right? But rheumatoid arthritis is going to be here and in here and down into here. Okay. Bilateral joints, so bilateral wrists, bilateral hands are going to be affected. Subcutaneous rheumatoid nodules will be noted. Positive elevated rheumatoid factor. The rheumatoid factor is only going to be released with rheumatoid arthritis, and it is a protein. The thing about the rheumatoid factor is that it is a protein that is designed to attack the body. And so we, we are looking for this with rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Positive elevated rheumatoid factor. Yes. Radiographic changes, meaning the way that the body is shaped is going to become abnormal. And so the first four criteria uh, for at least six weeks have to be met. At least six weeks have to be met. Shout out, shout out to all of the Remar nurses. We got over 700 now. So if we're talking about analyzing cues, and you know this is one of the steps of the clinical judgment measurement model, you got to be able to analyze the cues that the patient will present to you. And so we are looking for signs that are persistent. 
we are looking for a history of these symptoms that are all that are persistent because rheumatoid arthritis develops over time. And we also have to be able to articulate the difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. At least know the difference between those two. All right, now, quick critical thinking question. Put this in the comments as quick as possible. What factor is found in the blood that is persistent in rheumatoid arthritis? I just gave you the answer, but I wanted to focus in on this point. What is it? What is the factor that we are looking for? It's persistent in, in rheumatoid arthritis. It is a... Mm, 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 mm. It is the rheumatoid factor. Yes, great job. It's the rheumatoid factor. Good. So I want you guys to put that in your mind. Okay, write it down if you don't have it written anywhere. Okay, I'm just going to read the test results for diagnostics. These will make sense. Let me just read them to you. So for rheumatoid arthritis, the blood work, what we're looking for, what we're going to expect is positive rheumatoid factor test. So we're going to be looking for that. Also, elevated globulin levels, elevated immunoglobulin levels, immunoglobulin levels. Okay. They, they are just saying that our immune system is activated, which makes sense because there's an inflammatory process. Check this out, guys. Elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Now, when I had first learned erythrocyte sedimentation rate in nursing school, I did not understand it. I did not understand it at all. But it is so easy to understand because the, the, the name tells you exactly what's going on. Erythrocyte. Do we all know what erythrocytes are? Okay, in the blood. Okay, sedimentation. Sedimentation is a fancy word for settle. That's it. And the rate is just how fast it is settling. So when you see these things, when you see erythrocyte sedimentation rate, it is just saying how fast do the erythrocytes settle in the blood, okay, when it's spinned around really fast. That's it, okay? Complete blood count. Low hemoglobin, low hematocrit. Low hemoglobin and low hematocrit. And yeah, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, it does measure inflammation, which is going to be um, apparent in rheumatoid arthritis. So if we're talking about osteoarthritis, would we expect the physician to order an erythrocyte sedimentation rate? Are we going to be looking for that? No, my remar nurses are going to say no because we understand what that measures. This is how you pass NCLEX. This is how you pass NCLEX, guys. It is literally sitting down, looking at a subject, and just talking through it. We, we, we're literally talking through a patient coming into the hospital with signs and symptoms. We looked at the history. Now we're looking at the diagnosis of it. What labs are we expecting to be ordered? Where are those laboratory values going to present with? And most importantly, this is what I don't see people doing, um, asking or telling you what the labs mean and why they mean what they mean in different instances. So for example, let's do this. Complete blood count, low hemoglobin, low hematocrit. Why would we see that with rheumatoid arthritis? Why are we going to see low hemoglobin, low hematocrit? Put that in the comments while I read this. Superb, Holly Chanel says, I thank God I passed. Quick facts, and V2 helped me a lot. The case studies really made me very comfortable on the NCLEX. I felt relaxed while testing. I'm officially a Remar nurse PN. Thank you, Regina. Uh, amazing. If you guys saw the new NCLEX pass rates, I did a video on the pass rates that are, have just come out for NCLEX R and NCLEX PN and repeat test takers. And I'm so happy that the NCLEX PN test takers are doing so well. So you, Nurse Holly, are contributing to that increased pass rate for the practical nurses. And I'm glad to help you do it. I'm glad to help you do it. Practical nurses absolutely need, 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 need.
NCLEX reviews. They help so much in the V2 specifically. Okay, so great. I asked why the hemoglobin in hematocrit is low in rheumatoid arthritis. And I love nurse, wait, hold on. I mean, I don't want to miss it. Nurse Bamata. Am I saying that right? She says because of anemia. Absolutely, because of anemia. Because of the fact that with the generalized inflammation, the bone marrow is going to produce way less red blood cells. And so that's something that I said will happen in a systemic inflammation response. So rheumatoid arthritis, it causes so many issues beyond just stiffness, right? And I want you guys to know that, okay, because we're smart nurses. Now, if we were to do, okay, if we were to do a um, fluid analysis, synovial fluid, we're going to see an increased volume, decreased viscosity and complement, don't worry about the C3 and C4. That's just for those who may be in nursing school. Maybe your professor may get deep with that. But for NCLEX, know that you're also going to see elevated white blood cells. And it is because we have an inflammation and immune response. Okay. Loving it. Our imaging tests, what are we going to see? We're going to see bone demineralization and soft tissue swelling. We're going to see on an MRI and a CT scan, we're going to see that damage done. Biopsy, if we draw out the synovial fluid, remember when you biopsy something, you're trying to get a sample of it, you will have inflammation noted. How do we treat this condition? If we were doing education on treatment, we would tell our patients, well, you definitely want to have some lifestyle modification with rheumatoid arthritis, you know you're going to be stiff in the morning, okay? You know you're going to be stiff in the morning, so when should we have the activity done, okay? How do we help with joint stiffness in the, in the morning, right? Do we like for this patient to be cold, or is it best for them to stay in warm environments? A lot of people with RA like to move to Florida. They like to move south because the warm environments allow them to have better activity. Yeah. Or they can go out west and they can go to Arizona and they can go to California too because it's, it's warm there too. Psychosocial interventions. Patients who have rheumatoid arthritis, they can become depressed. They can become, you know, um, they, can be, they can begin to have anxiety because anytime you're constantly in pain, it's not a good feeling. Also, nutritional and dietary counseling for uh, the, the patient with rheumatoid arthritis. We want them on a low inflammatory diet. Pharmacological, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. Pharmacological, we want to give our patients the silicates, right? Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Gold salts. Gold salts have anti-inflammatory properties, so they can actually be injected into the muscles, or you could take them by mouth. COX-2 inhibitors, you can give DMARDs, which are disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, and immunosuppressants, immunosuppressants. Methotrexate is a medication that I want to spotlight. You can give this medication orally and intravenously. Indications, this is actually a cancer medication, but it is used for rheumatoid arthritis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and also psoriasis, contraindication, pregnancy, alcohol use, immunodeficiency, blood cell dyscrasia. And that just means any um, abnormal, any abnormal blood disorder, okay? Like sickle cell anemia would be considered blood cell dyscrasia. Adverse effect, GI, hepatic, pulmonary, hematological, nephrodermatological toxicity. So methotrexate affects many, many, many other organs. However, the benefits outweigh the risk. Nursing consideration is oral hygiene, oral, encourage oral hygiene, preemptive measures against infection, bruising, and bleeding. What can we do for surgery? We talked about pharmacological, non-pharmacological and surgery. So typically, I, surgery is not a main treatment, but 
metatarsal and distal ulnar resection, arthroplasty can be done, arthrodesis, which is joint fusion, sovenectomy, osteotomy can be done, can repair ruptured tendons if they become infected, or joint reconstruction as well. What is your priority as a nurse? Pain management. When patients come in and they are reporting pain, our priority for rheumatoid arthritis is going to be make sure that their pain medicine is safely administered. Also, their mobility is key. Skin integrity as well, maintaining skin integrity. That's with everybody. Promoting psychosocial acceptance of limitation and also their sense of well-being. How do we do those things? Well, we're going to give our prescribed analgesics and anti-rheumatics while watching or monitoring for adverse reactions. Perform meticulous skin care, give adaptive devices, the patient needs it, canes, right, walkers. Heat, heat to relax muscles and relieve pain. Ice packs can be used during acute episodes. Provide splints to rest inflamed joints and provide a way to maintain function of joints. Okay. All right, here we go. Questions, 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 questions. Here's our first question on the subject, rheumatoid arthritis. Comments on the screen. And also let me know where you're from. Put the, put the, the number and then let me know where, I'm, where you're studying from. Question number one says this. A client has a history of rheumatoid arthritis. Which of the following symptoms should the nurse anticipate the most? Okay, we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis. Number one, elevated uric acid. Two, evening joint stiffness. Three, hard and bony joint swelling. Four, multiple and bilateral joint pains. Hey, Chicago in the house. Hey, welcome. Welcome, shy town in the house. Love that. Remar nurses are saying number four, Seattle, Washington. I almost was there trying to get to Alaska. Got to stop in Seattle first. Omaha, Nebraska, Ethiopia, international nurse. First one that I saw. Brazil, yes. California, Maryland, love it. Mississippi, go coast. PA, Texas. Okay, most of you guys are saying it's four. Nolens is here. Philippines, as always, representing. Okay, correct answer is number four. You got it. Multiple and bilateral joint pains. You will not be fooled on NCLEX when you study with me because we go over the content. It doesn't matter what question you get. It could be a select a million that apply. You will know the answer because we did content. Yes, right. Rheumatoid arthritis is commonly presented with morning joint stiffness, not evening. Also, bilateral swelling of joints and mostly soft and boggy joints, not hard, soft. Elevated uric acid is common in gout, and evening stiffness is common in osteoarthritis. Hey, Rhode Island, welcome. Hi, AT, I love it. Okay, question number two. Let's see if I can get you guys. To give me the right answers. I'm looking for right answers. Five out of five. The nurse was asked by a client with rheumatoid arthritis, what will happen if the disease is left untreated? The best response of the nurse is, number one, you may develop osteomyelitis. Two, fusion of the joints and bone tissues may happen. Three, memory deficits are likely common. Four, it is self-limiting disease and recurs when you are immunosuppressed. Mm -hmm. Okay. What saith you? What saith you? <laughs> I love it when you say I eat tea. <laughs> okay. We're talking about how rheumatoid arthritis will progress if it's not treated, because that's a good point. We're talking about the worst things that can happen. What's the worst things that can happen if it's not treated? 
Some people are saying number four, some people are saying number one, you might develop osteomyelitis. Few people are saying number two, correct answer on the screen. Did you get this one? It's number two for sure. Remember, bony ankylosis will happen. It is a complication of rheumatoid arthritis. And this is where that inflammation is so consistent, so persistent that the joints fuse with the tissues. Mm, yes. And that's due to just being inflamed. And so if you don't have, okay, um, if you don't have treatment in place, prolonged inflammation can make that happen, okay? If RA is left untreated, it does not cause bone infection or memory deficits. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic disease and can flare up. It ha you have the flares when the client is stressed or immunosuppressed. Here's question number three. The nurse attends to a client with hip pain due to rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, hip pain due to rheumatoid arthritis. Which of the following chairs is best to be offered for the client at this time. Okay, you've got a lot of things going on here. Okay, you got hip pain, rheumatoid arthritis, pick a chair. Number one, a soft chair fully supported with cushions. Two, a cushion rocking chair with arm and wrist support. Three, a wooden chair with an elevated seat and a straight back. Ooh, mm. Four, a rocking chair with a curved back. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, I knew it. I was pressing you guys. <laughs> I wanted you to critically think. No, well, now I'm asking you questions about chairs because you didn't know how important chairs were in nursing. But right now you're going to give it a try. I'm stretching you. I'm stretching you tonight. Talking about the importance of a therapeutic chair. Don't offer me the wrong chair when I got hip pain. Correct answer. I like it. You know, Courtney's like, maybe? I don't know. Maybe it's oh, one or two. Okay. Correct answer is number three. Courtney, you were right. Maybe it's three. Maybe three is right. This patient has hip, chain, hip pain. So with rheumatoid, okay, um, clients with rheumatoid arthritis should have their joints well supported by maintaining proper posture and body alignment. Okay. This will also support the joints and decrease pain stiffness. So keeping the seat elevated helps to avoid hip flexion as well. So this helps to the patient not to be in that 90 degree angle. But just think about it. Like if you're in a chair, you know, and the back is straight, it helps you to sit straight. But if you got cushions in the chair and you can like slump down in the chair and maybe the cushions are not that well, you know, they're, they're kind of old beat up cushions. And so you end up leaning and things like that. And you're a patient, they're not going to be comfortable. And it's because you didn't provide the right chair. You got to, you got to get the, the hard chairs. Okay. They don't look comfortable. They're actually the best type of chairs for support. Imagine that. Okay, here we go. Question number four is this. The nurse provides health education for a female client prescribed with methotrexate. Which information is the most important to give? Number one, teach the client to document symptoms while on treatment. Two, pregnancy should be avoided. Three, monitor for skin changes. Four, monthly blood draws and toxicity check are required. Remar nurses, we doing it. Winning Wednesday. I love when you guys show up because I know that it takes a sacrifice to, to take time out of your busy schedule to come to class, especially during the holiday season. And if you did not know, yes, it is the holiday season. It started the day after Halloween. The holiday season, Christmas starts the day after Halloween. All right. So you took time out of your holiday season to study. It means you really want to do this. A lot of people are saying number two, a lot of Remar nurses are right. When you're on methotrexate, you have to remember, can't get pregnant. Okay. Can't get pregnant. And this medication, why it is teratogenic. If you have not seen that word before, please understand it, study it, write it down. 
Okay, the client should be placed on birth control with methotrexate. This was a female client. Okay, the other options are also important, but you know, but not more important than if a client becomes pregnant on this treatment. Question number five is this. The nurse is caring for a client with rheumatoid arthritis, okay? <laughs> Aspirin is ordered every four hours as needed for joint pain. The client's last dose was given at 10 in the morning. The client reports pain around two in the afternoon. What should the nurse do first? Okay. Number one, provide a warm compress. Two, ask the client what is hurting. Three, give the medication. Four, refer to the physician. What are we going to do? Love this question. As you guys ruminate over the answers, I have a testimonial. I have a testimonial. And I'm going to tell you guys, change your answer. Too many of y'all got that question wrong. You need to go back, change your answer. I took my NCLEX RN for the second time and passed a... 11-1. 11-1. It's already November. Okay. After only using V2 for the 45 days, I had to wait. I am a Remar registered nurse. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. You're going into the holiday season with your nursing license. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing for you. Now, for the rest of you, what happened? What is going on in the comments? The nurse is caring for a client with rheumatoid arthritis. Aspirin is ordered every four hours as needed for joint pain. The client's last dose was given at 10 in the morning. The client reports pain around two in the afternoon. What should the nurse do first? Number one, provide a warm compress. Two, ask the client what is hurting. Three, give the medication. Four, refer to the physician. Oh, uh, this, this is a safety question. You get this one right, you stay above the passing standard. You get this one wrong, you fall below the passing standard. And it's literally a matter of safety because these medications can all be right, but only one you should do first. And that is assess. Ask the client what is hurting, okay? Aspirin can alleviate pain and swelling in clients with RA. The nurse should assess though the pain prior to giving the medication or providing intervention. It could be pain from somewhere else. Proper assessment is needed to provide safe and appropriate interventions. Cause I mean, what if the patient says I'm in pain and the nurse asks, why are you in pain? And the patient says, I got a migraine. You know, I get them every once in a while, like once every three months. And now I have a migraine. And you thinking is rheumatoid arthritis pain, but actually it's migraine pain, okay? Or it's abdominal pain because they are constipated from, you know, the aspirin therapy, right? I don't know. It could be anything. So a lot of people were saying, a lot of people were saying, just give the medication. But no, 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 no. No, we can't do that. We have to assess the patient first. You can't skip the nursing process without the information, okay? All right, so if you didn't get it right, guess what? You're here to learn. And I'd rather for you to get it wrong here than get it wrong there. And absolutely, is the medication due? Yeah, the medication is due. You technically could give the medication, but you absolutely do need to assess the patient first. So it's not a matter of, is it time to give the medication? It's time to give it. But is that the first thing you do? That's what I asked you. And remember, listen, remember, you have to pass the NCLEX that's on the screen, not the one in your head. So every little detail that you're given is to be used to make an appropriate answer, okay? But when you skip past stuff or you just go, you know, let me just hurry up and get through this, I, I don't know. I don't know what happens, but you have to look at everything. And, and coming here, helps you. Coming here helps you for sure. That's why this is that's why this is so important in the journey. 
And people come back here and say, I passed by doing exactly what you're doing tonight. So never feel discouraged. If you get something wrong, always know, hey, I'm learning and I have to get things wrong first in order to get things right. OK, so if you are ready for the next session that is coming up and you want to make sure that you have your Remar products, I want you to do this. Go to my website. OK, sign up for the Black Friday promotions that are starting soon. Also, Sign up for my Black Friday class that I'll be launching. Go to remarnurse.com. Give me your name, your proper email. Don't rush through the email. I want to write email and I want a number to be able to text you. We found that texting works tremendously. And it is just like, it'll be a short text. Hey, Regina is going live in 10 minutes. So you can hurry up, um, get to where you need to go, er, pull over. I don't know, but you guys have to be studying, right? That's part of this process. So Go ahead and go to the website, remarnurse.com. You will get an alert when the 10 on the 10th drops. I will make sure that I personally um, send out a text message to everybody that signed up. And then I still have more awesome things that are coming for this holiday season for you guys. So don't miss it. But it all starts by signing up for the Black Friday. It's starting November 10th, which is this Friday. This Friday, my favorite book for NCLEX. Quick facts, $10, $10 holler. I, I, I don't think we've done this in a very long time. $10 so quick. Have we ever done it before? No, we've never done this before. So Remar nurses, it's not even going to be $10 on Black Friday. One day, one day this book will be $10. So this is the time to get it. People are asking, what about the t-shirts and the hoodies? No, people want people want the Remar t-shirts. Can you grab me one? Just want to make sure we're talking. People want the Remar t-shirts to wear on their NCLEX day, okay? I told you guys. Um, yeah, he's looking. Um, I told you guys, please sign up for, go to remarnurse.com, sign up, because I see you guys asking me, what about V2? What about first shift? What am I doing for Black Friday? There's going to be an official date where we release all the sales for Black Friday, but we're going to first start on Friday and then we're going to release them. This one right here? I don't know. Is this the one? Is this the is this the shirt that you guys are talking about? Remar Nurse with God is possible. I think they I think they want this one or the hoodies. Do you have the hood? Do we have the hoodies? Is it this one that you guys want? Because I need to know. We have not finalized this all. Or is it the hoodie? But it is it's this one too. I don't think the hoodie is online yet. Can we put it online for Black Friday? Say I won't have mine. Um, some people are saying the hoodie, <laughs> the hoodie, the hoodie. I think this is the mark. This is Mark's official hoodie. And anytime I'm wearing one, it's it's him. It's his. Okay. Um, I would definitely wear my shirt on exam day if I can purchase one. I don't know if it's this one. Um, but this one is always on the site, remarnurse.com. I don't know how much it will be for Black Friday. How much is it now? What? You guys, if you guys tell us the price. <laughs> no. So this shirt, this t-shirt is $24.99 right now. Yeah. Okay. We're going to, we'll, we'll do something with that for Black Friday. And then what the hoodie, can you put this? They want this for Black Friday. Yeah, and I might have to sell yours. I'll just sell yours if you can't get it on there. Uh, thanks, Remar. Both, please. How much is the hoodie? The hoodie's not even available, so we would definitely have to put it online and then make it online. And you just go to remarnurse.com. We had these, we gave the, well, we, we gave these ones out at the convention, these Remar nurse shirts. Like we gave these out to like educators and people who literally had no idea who I was, teachers were wearing it the next day. And it was so cool to see um, because I, I, people just love, I, you know what they really love? They love this part with God is possible. Cause they were like, I never, you know, I didn't know that people put their faith out there like that. I'm like, yeah, we do. I think it's on this one too. So I will work on, um, I'll, I'll make sure Mark works on getting this one out. I don't know how you're going to do it, but yeah. You, if you go to the Remar site, 
<laughs> if you go to the Remar site, remarnurse.com, sign up for Black Friday, I'll let you know. And Rosie said she wants this shirt. She wants a Black Friday mega deal. Look, what? Those shirts are free, though. These shirts are... Rosie says she wants this for $7.99. The shirts are free. The shirts are free? Yeah. How can they get them for free? If you pass NCLEX. Oh, yeah. If you pass <laughs> NCLEX with Remar, sure, you can get this for free. Yeah. We do. Do a, do a testimonial. Yeah, these, yeah, that's true. That's true. But if they want to, they want to wear them to their test date. Okay. Okay. With God is possible. Put both online. V2. People want sales for V2. I hear you guys. I hear you. You want the V2 on a Black Friday price. So that that's why Black Friday is just one day because it's all or nothing. It's all in. No excuses. Um, Nurse F Fabian. Hello, Remar. I'm late, but I just want you to know I passed my NCLEX today. I'm officially a Remar nurse. May God bless you and Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Oh, man. Different. Not only did they want, they want this hoodie, but they also said put it in different colors as well. He, he said, what color? Mark will read this. Put the color that you want for this. I don't know. Probably pink and purple. No request. Okay. Goodness. Mark said, if you don't have this book, he's not taking any requests. So you at least have to get this one. I thought purple. I thought purple for sure. People will want that. Okay. Um, V2 Black Friday sale is happening. We're still formulating how we're going to do it. Also, I would say with this Quick Facts book, don't wait. Like, get, sign up so you know exactly when you're going, when the sale happens, so you can be the first to get it. You know, when we do Black Friday, it literally does take longer for us to ship the books out. So the sooner that you buy the book when it happens, the faster that it will come to you. Also, I don't want to do too much. I feel like I just, I'm just going to leave it at that. This is step one, get this book. And then in, for like, you can study it for like two weeks and then you can get into the V2 content. And I also will be putting um, the other products out. Okay. Who is in nursing school? Navy, purple and red. Somebody wants it in Navy blue. What about, I don't know. Can can you guys hear me? Okay. So CAT exam, quick facts is $10, but this will, this will just be for Friday. Black Friday, um, this will be just for this Friday. Black Friday, this pro book will probably be like $15 or $20. Okay. Um, somebody says V2, first shift. And then, is that it? The renewals won't change. The renewals for the V2, they're currently at $50 a month. Those, I cannot change those. So those will be still $50. So the best thing will be to get into the V2 at a lower price so that you can continue to study, okay? This is all new generation stuff. Who was it? Just leave the black. What else? I'm, I'm, I'm stalling so that we can know what you want to see for Black Friday. Gray, yes. I can, I will with God. Absolutely. Can you give me the other book? Mm -hmm. For nursing students, now, nursing school. For nursing school, you guys know I talked about um, the new book that I have under the Quick Facts series. Emma Green, this game. Yeah. So we have these in Quick Facts for nursing school. This is for my nursing students who have to take pharmacology and med surge. So I also will be doing promotions for this book as well. It will be coming out later. Really quick question. People say, do I need the red book or the blue? Right now, it's all red. Okay. Right now, it's all red. That's what I want you to focus on. This is step one. What? It depends on what they're in school. Right. But the blue is for those who are in nursing school. A lot of people that are watching me right now, you're preparing for NCLEX. So I don't want you in blue. Is it purple? This is purple? Mark, this look blue. Not okay. <laughs> purple. This is blue. Purple. <sighs> okay. This might be purple. Um, but this is for nursing students, okay? So this is for nursing students. This is if you are 
going into nursing school or if you are in the, you know, you have like six months left of nursing school, this is for you. Okay. This will be it. All right. Is that it is a purple. That's there. Y'all dare wrong for not agreeing with me in front of Mark. We're supposed to be united, not divided. Okay. They said we see purple. So that is how I, um, that's why I'll end the class. Step one right now for everybody though, is to go to remarnurse.com and sign up for a Black Friday so that I can see you the promotions. And I'll be doing a release date here in another, probably another week or so with everything. I just need to be able to finalize everything that we need to do. It's going to be a lot of work for Team Remar, but we will accomplish it for you guys. So if that means us having to, you know, just work all night or whatever we will do, Black Friday is really the biggest, um, the biggest day for um, for Remar nurses to come together and make sure we get what you what you need. OK, <laughs> they said, you guys are going to leave me for Mark. You said Mark is Mark is with the Lord. <laughs> Okay. Um, thank you. I enjoyed class today. Thank you for being here, guys. It's a pleasure. It's always a great time when we get together on Mondays and Wednesdays. So we'll be back again on Mondays, having a new topic for us to discuss. And every day we are getting closer to Thanksgiving, which means we're going to be eating a lot. Okay. Um, do you recommend taking the cat before the NCLEX? Yes, I do. But I will say this, do the content first. Okay. Um, and then do your cat exam. Okay. All right. And there's two cats. There's two cat exams in the V2 course. So you can do the first cat exam right after you do uh, study session, after you do study session number 20, see how you do. If you don't pass my first cat exam, don't feel like the world is over. Remember that cat exam is to do two things. Number one, it is to give you the experience of doing a five hour test. Okay that you have to answer every question. You can't skip it. So it is going to give you the experience of taking the actual NCLEX exam. It is a true CAT exam. Meaning if you walk away from that exam to go eat lunch or go to the bathroom or just go outside, it doesn't matter. The time will still be running down. You can go back to it, but you've lost time. Just like your NCLEX exam. When you take NCLEX, you can get up and go to the bathroom and take a break and throw water on your face. That's fine, but your test is still going to be um, progressing in time. So that's one thing. So it's just to give you the practice of sitting down and being in one place for up to five hours, which a lot of us don't do on a regular basis. So if nothing else, do the CAT exam for that. The second reason is because the CAT exam is going to challenge you. Has anybody here taken my CAT exam? It's no joke. It is to challenge you. It is to prepare you to get stuff thrown at you that you may have never been asked, okay? So that is also going to make you feel less anxious and less nervous about your actual exam when you're testing. Then you won't be, you know, you won't be like, oh man, I've never been in this situation before. I don't know. If you take my CAT exam, you will know what it's like to be tested. Right. And then after the CAT exam, you're going to get a printout of the areas that you were above passing in and below passing in so that you can go into the question bank and study. That's how you do it. OK, so that is the goal. I do have a printable calendar and printable V2 for you. OK, so I would I would suggest doing that. All right. Now, anything else, guys, please send me an email support at remar, uh, review com because I would love to talk about individual things and individual places where you are. And uh, I, I'll, I'll be doing that. It is 10 o'clock, guys. It's 10 p.m. at night. So let us close our class for this evening. And remember, oh, yeah, I got to go because it's 10 for 10. So on Friday, we will have the 10 for 10 for you. And it, it's just going to be a great season. I'm so excited about this. This is the beginning of a lot of people's journeys uh, passing their exam. It starts somewhere. And so I'm happy that, uh, you know, 700 of you are here tonight and you show up every single time. And so this is what the community is about. We're going to be spending the holidays together, guys. So Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, 
the day before Thanksgiving, Christmas, all while, um, you know, everybody is essentially taking off because that's what happens. People take off during the holidays, don't they? They just get caught up in giving gifts and uh, whatever, family stuff, which is all good stuff. I want you guys to, you know, prioritize your family and love your family. But at the same time, I need you to know that every day that you're not working with a nursing license, you're not blessing your family the way that you could be. And so I'm going to turn it up during the holiday seasons so that you don't have to feel like you got to take a break study because we will be here waiting for you to do it. What? I'm going to give them a lecture on therapeutic communication. We're going to sign off and say goodbye after the lecture. Okay. Because right. everybody needs the free trial or the V2. And okay. Now they get to see what's inside the V2. Okay. So in a, a, an interesting turn of events, we are going to do a lecture tonight. So I'm gonna give everybody like 30 seconds. What's about to happen is I'm gonna do a lecture from the V2. Right? I'm gonna play a lecture from the V2 on therapeutic communication. And so this is great because essentially if you don't have V2, you have the free trial of V2. So you're in one of two places. You either have V2 already, you watch this, or you don't have V2, you don't know what my course is, you don't know what my program is, you might not even know who I am and you just stumbled upon this. So let me tell, tell you this, you are about to experience what it is to study a subject for the NCLEX exam and not by just doing practice questions, but we are actually going to go into my course and we're gonna watch a video on therapeutic communications. So go ahead get out your workbook if you have it, or get out a notebook, something like this. You can just get out a plain notebook like this, okay? And begin to take notes. It's happening now. Therapeutic communication has a very important purpose because these are going to be strategies that we can use as registered nurses to help our clients express their feelings more effectively. So I like to use the acronym SOLAR, S-O-L-A-R. These are strategies we can use. The S stands for sit in silence. It is okay to just be quiet and allow the client to express their feelings. The O stands for observe with openness. The L stands for listen and lean forward. These are both therapeutic actions. A stands for at eye level. It's okay to sit down, look your client in the face and be at eye level while you're listening. And then the R stands for relax and also rephrase what the client is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, these are things that we don't do when we're trying to be therapeutic. The first is give our personal opinions. Even if the client asks you, would you have this procedure? What do you think I should do? Would you take this medication? Those are big no-nos. Don't give your personal opinion about their situation. The second thing, is changing the subject. Mm -mm. Third is false reassurance. False reassurance is saying things like, if you do this, you'll feel better. Or don't worry, everything will be okay. Those things make the client feel like you don't really care. Next up, we have arguing with the client. It may be easy to fall into this trap, but don't do it. And also using words like bad, good, wrong, or right are non-therapeutic. On NCLEX, we choose to do these things. And the first is never ask why. Never ask why a client is doing something, why they feel a certain way. We just don't ask them that. Also, when you're being therapeutic, never promise that you won't tell anyone because as registered nurses, you do have a responsibility to include 
other healthcare professionals in some areas of the client's care. So on NCLEX, let's look for number one, open-ended questions, two, answers that focus on the feelings, three, answers that reflect or rephrase what the client is saying. Remember, when you use therapeutic communication, it allows the client to really make their own choices. So the next part of my therapeutic communication, I want to focus on medications. And I want to look at the digoxin parameters before we move on. Now, the digoxin parameters have to do with when to hold the medication. You can give digoxin at any age group. So you know you have to take an apical pulse for a full minute before you administer it. So let's talk about what the hold rate is of the heart. So for newborns, if the heart rate is less than 100, then you hold the digoxin. For one to three years old, if the heart rate was less than 90, then you hold the medication. Three to eight years old, if the heart rate less than 80, then you hold the medication. And then eight to adult, if that heart rate was less than 60, then you hold the medication. More therapeutic communications, we're gonna look at our important drug, antidotes. Antidotes can also be called reversal agents on NCLEX, but they mean the same thing. So we're gonna look at the medication and the antidote. The first medication, magnesium sulfate, the antidote is calcium gluconate. Insulin is glucagon, heparin, it is protamine sulfate. For methotrexate, we have the cuvarin, and for warfarin, you can have vitamin K or fresh frozen plasma. I want to lead you guys with the needle information. Yes, as registered nurses, you will be given a many injections. So I wanna talk about the three different kind, the subcutaneous, the intradermal, and the IM. We need to know the skin layers that are penetrated, the gauge of the appropriate needle, and that length. So looking at the subcutaneous injection, the skin layers that are penetrated are first the epidermis, then the dermis into the subcutaneous fat. So you have three there. The appropriate gauge is 25 gauge and the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Next, we have the intradermal. When you do an intradermal injection, you go through the epidermis and into the dermis. The gauge is 25 and the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Finally, we have the intramuscular injection. The skin layers penetrated are the epidermis through the dermis, through the subcutaneous fat, and into the muscle. The gauge required for IM injection is 22, and the length is one inch. Great job, guys, on therapeutic communication. Let's keep going. Thank you guys so much for attending Winning Wednesday. I hope you like that preview of the V2. I love therapeutic communication. It comes right, um, right around the same time as psychiatric concepts and psychiatric medications are discussed. And so this is what it's like to actually do the content. We'll get into some questions. You can get into the question bank, but that primary work is what's going to make the difference in you being able to go through case studies where you're seeing multiple aspects of pathophysiology. So the signs and symptoms, the treatment, um, patient education, that is how you prepare for a licensure exam by doing that work. Hi, a nurse Anne-Marie Stewart says, hi, Remar and team. I'm excited to always log on here for class. I passed my NCLEX RN October on 89 questions. Keep up the good work. I encourage everyone to get the quick facts in V2. I took three weeks to prepare. Wow. 
three weeks is a very short time to sacrifice for a lifetime of payments, basically, right? You're going to be a nurse. And I actually, oh, did I bring it? Mark, please give me my purse. Real quick story. I'm in Michigan right now. I was in California and I went to Michigan and I'm staying in this essentially an Airbnb. And in the back of the Airbnb, there's like this huge lodge. And all of a sudden, Mark is like, come outside, come outside quick. And outside there is a, a helicopter and it is a flight helicopter. And so anyways, um, I met some nurses who were um, flight nurses. And inside of that flight helicopter, you know what it was? It was an ICU. I had never been into a helicopter before that was for survival, only like touring. I think we Las Vegas. I did a helicopter ride in Las Vegas, you know, where they take you around the city and everything like that. So anyways, these were the nice, nur the nicest nurses I had ever met. And they allowed myself and my kids to go into this helicopter and they showed us all around. And I was just telling them like, yeah, well, Mark actually was telling them what we do. Oh, so this is it right here. So you guys, this is so cool. This is, can I just scroll this way or no? No, I don't want to just go for it. This is your phone. You might have some this pictures of me crazy. here. It's what? <laughs> He's going to just scroll, Mark. So anyways, this is inside of the helicopter, right? And so these are, these are all of the equipment that was inside of it. I thought it was so interesting because they literally said that like they can do almost anything in there in the ICU. Like they put in chest tubes. They've done artificial airways. I had even asked them because I saw, I don't know if I have a picture of it, but like right here, if you guys can see this, this said oxygen. And then under here, it said medical air. And so I had never, I never heard that term before. Do you guys know what the difference between oxygen and medical air is in a helicopter? Cause I'm thinking to myself, like what is happening in there? Like what, what are y'all doing in there? So anyway, she explained to me that medical air essentially for them is just like room air right? Um, but it is air that keeps, uh, she said it's used for babies because sometimes babies, their lungs will collapse and they just need pressure to keep their lungs open, but they don't necessarily need a medication, which oxygen is a medication. And so I love that she explained that to me, like, okay, so that was really cool. Um, this was the nurse and she was talking to talking to me and Mark explaining to us. I love her. Her name was Donna. And so this is the helicopter, guys. It, I mean, it was just so amazing. We had just landed in Michigan and I was able to see these nurses. This is my daughter, Salome, blogging about it. You guys know Salome. Um, and so this is the kids. They were able to go into am I like just being super nice. All these pictures of Salome. Do we have anything else? Um, and so anyways. After we left, this nurse, Donna, she walked over to our Airbnb. Like she walked into our home and I, I don't even know what I was doing. I think I was trying to get ready. But anyway, she walked into the home and she gave Mark this. Okay. She gave Mark this, which she called it a challenge coin. And this is from the flight nurses. And essentially she said, these are given when somebody is doing something extraordinary and and you are supposed to find somebody to give it to when you see that they are doing something extraordinary. And so she said what Mark and I are doing here with uh, with NCLEX prep with helping nurses is extraordinary. And so she gave us that coin. So people of Michigan you have amazing nurse representations. And if you are here watching from Michigan and you're going into nursing, this is your standard. Like these, these nurses were phenomenal. She said, if you wanted to do flight nursing, if being in a helicopter is your thing, you definitely need ICU care. You need um, acute medicine. You need pediatrics. Uh, you probably need a critical care resource nurse certification. And so it's possible. And like, this is, this is why I tell you guys, get that license. Don't get stuck in studying for NCLEX that you miss amazing opportunities to go to the next level. Before I became a nurse, I worked in, you know, Farmore. I don't know if you guys know Farmore, they're out of business now, but they were a pharmacy. I worked as a home health aide. I worked in transport, you know, I, I worked in concession stands. So 
I can imagine what my life would be like if I had not passed NCLEX. And so I want you guys to see the possibilities. I want you to see the possibilities of what you could be doing based off where you are now. All right. And so again, this is the season. It's the holiday season for many people where they will be receiving gifts. But I think you also can give yourself the best gift, which is your dream career, right? Instead of going out and buying things for other people that they may forget about uh, in, in like a couple of weeks or so, your kids, you buy your kids a toy on Christmas day, the next day, they don't even want to play with it. All right. Try to think, how can I use what I have to get me to the next level? And then I'll be able to bless other people. Okay. So um, Black Friday is coming up. I want you to log in. I want you to attend that class with me. It's the day after Thanksgiving. I know you may have a lot of things to do, but prioritize this. Okay. This is the season for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you for just being a part of our family. Winning Wednesday has been presented. Have a good evening, everybody. Bye-bye.